Need some help picking a fin system? Well, here are five reasons I've chosen Futures Fins over FCS2. Hi guys, Chris from Stoke for Travel here, or welcome back to the channel. Now, before I get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any video goodness. Now today we're going to be talking all about surf fins and more importantly the difference between futures fins and FCS2. We're going to be talking about the pros and the cons of both fin setups so you can make the right decision. And I'm also going to be running through five reasons why I've recently swapped from FCS2 over to futures. So yeah, let's get started. Okay, so first I'm just going to quickly run through the difference between the two fin systems so you can tell them apart. Uh, first off, Futures. This is also known as the single tab system as it has a single base at the bottom of the fin. Uh, now when it comes to the fin box, it's a nice long open fin box with a single tab at the back to clip the fin in. And then you've also got a single screw at the front of the box as well to secure your fin. Uh, FCS2 on the other hand is known as the dual tab system because it has two tabs at the bottom of the fin. Uh, it hinges in through the front of the fin and is technically a toolless fin system um, so you don't actually need a screw although we are going to get into that a little bit later on. Um, the fin box itself has two tab openings, two little slots on the surfboard and you can put a uh, fin screw at the front and the back of the fin if needed. Yeah, those are the main differences so let's run through five reasons why I've switched from SS2 to Futures Fins. So the first and major reason I made the swap from FCS2 fins to Futures is the security of the fin in the box itself. Now FCS2 is technically a toolless fin system so it clips into the box uh, which is awesome for people traveling or if you want to switch fins out um, quickly but the trade-off is the security of the fin in the box. Uh, now having spoken to friends who've worked in surf shops, the amount of people they have come in on a weekly basis who have knocked the fin out uh, on a rock or a sandbar or something and have lost one of their fins while surfing is pretty incredible. Um, and if you think about that, every time you've got to go back in and get a new set of fins, you're gonna be looking at about 100 bucks plus for a set of FCS2 fins. Uh, Futures fins, on the other hand, clipping at the back with a single screw at the front, so they are much more secure in your fin box and you're much less likely to lose them. So yeah, fin security is the first major reason I switched from FCS2 to Futures. Moving on from point number one is point number two, the fact that Futures fin boxes just make more design sense. If you think about it practically as a surfer, if you're moving forward, that's where generally the way you're surfing, you've got a lot of speed, you've got a lot of momentum. So if you collide with something, there's a lot of potential for damage to your board, your fins, your fin boxes, and of course yourself. Uh, if you're moving backwards, on the other hand, you're generally not intending on moving that way. You've either done a duck dive and got sucked backwards a bit, or you're in a little bit of current. Whichever way you look at it, you're gonna be moving a lot slower and is very unintentional. So then why are FCS2 fins designed to clip out from force from a backwards movement? So if you go backwards and you hit a bit of a rock as you're paddling out, that's gonna clip out. Um, it makes no sense. On the other hand, if you are moving forwards and you hit the front of the fin, the fin box is not gonna give at all. That clip at the front is not gonna release. So there's a lot more potential to rip out your fin box as well as your fin. Uh, Futures fins, on the other hand, are designed much more kind of for a surfer, I guess. Uh, if you collide with something forward with a lot of force, generally the uh, screw and this bit here will give out and it will pivot across that back tab and the fin itself will come out. Uh, if you uh, put any kind of backwards force on a Futures fin, it's not going to clip out at all. So if you are moving slowly, it's just going to stay in and it's not going to affect your surf at all. So overall, if you think about it, things from a practical point of view, the Futures Fin Box is definitely better designed. <music> point number three is the ease of installation and swapping fins over. And I know what you're thinking, hang on a minute, isn't FCS2 marketed as a toolless fin system that you can easily clip in and out and swap fins over? Well, yes, but in real life, the practicality of it isn't quite as simple. Yes, sometimes the FCS2 fins do clip in quite smoothly and nicely, in which case, great. Uh, but nine times out of 10, I find that they're actually pretty awkward and fiddly to do. Uh, this tab at the front, you've got to wiggle right to the front and make sure you get it all clipped in. And this clip-in system is actually where things start going a bit wrong for me. Um, when you put it in the box and clip in, you've got to put a lot of pressure on this part of the fin to kind of ease it into the clip. Um, and with that, you could cut your hand. I've had a few slices and bruises over the years while using FCS2 fins. Uh, so make sure you use a towel over that to kind of minimize the damage to yourself. 
Um, and then also you're putting a lot of pressure on the fin boxes as you put it down. So there's quite a lot of opportunity to damage your fin boxes in the process if you do do this incorrectly. Um, also make sure you don't kneel on your board or have anything underneath your board while you're kind of clipping them in any stones or anything like that because you could damage the rest of your board that way as well. Um, another thing when you're taking the fins out, you've again got to put a lot of pressure here to clip it out, um, which again gives you opportunity to damage the fin boxes because there's a lot of pressure on them and make sure you use a towel on that when you clip it out as well. Uh, another thing that happened to me as well is the fin clipped out kind of one day while I wasn't expecting it and this uh, part of the fin flicked over and went straight into my board, dinging my board, which obviously isn't ideal. Uh, Future spins on the other hand, single tab in the back, nice long open box so they're really easy to put into the fin box, you don't need half as much pressure and then a single screw at the front, so really simple. Uh, in fact, the FCS2 fins have actually been so niggly to get in and out of the fin box that someone invented a uh, fin removal tool to get them in and out. So yeah, you've got your tallest, uh, tallest fin with a fin tool now. So yeah, put two and two together. They're not quite as easy as you might expect. Point number four of why I switch from FCS2 fins to Futures fins is simply the choice of fins on the market. Uh, now, without getting into too much detail, FCS en ended up embroiled in all kinds of paint awards, um, and basically they've now got a patent over the FCS fin system and the fin itself. So if you want to get an FCS2 compatible fin, you have to buy it through FCS. So obviously they are in control of the fins you've got options with, and also the price points as well. Uh, Futures fins, on the other hand, have opened up to third party suppliers as well. So there's a whole range of fins out there from all kinds of companies, including LZ Surf, Palm Bay, Bali, uh, Captain's Fins, and Shaper's Fins. So you've got a lot more choice. Um, and with choice becomes a lot more different options in terms of budget as well. So in terms of styles, colors, and price points, Futures Fins definitely have a lot more to offer. And the final reason I swap from FCS2 to Futures Fins is the strength of the box overall. Now, if you take a look at the fin boxes themselves, you'll see that the Futures Fins has quite a large lip around the outside of the box, about 4.5 mil in fact. Uh, the FCS2 fin box, on the other hand, has a much smaller lip uh, from the box into the glass. And in fact, at its smallest point is about one millimeter diameter. Uh, now that diameter is where the glass holds the fin box in place. Um, so obviously the uh, Futures fin box has a lot more glass holding it in. So which do you think is stronger? Um, now the other thing to take in mind is where the FCS2 box is, uh, is weakest is at the front and the back of the fin box, which is also where you'll be putting the pressure when you clip the fin in and out of the box and also where that uh, fin is going to try and pivot if you do actually collide with something. Uh, so it's got much more opportunity and weak points to get ripped out of your surfboard. Uh, in fact, I've spoken to a few uh, my friends who work at ding repair shops and they have a whole heap more FCS2 boards come in for fin box repairs um, than they do futures. In fact, they very rarely get any futures fin boxes uh, back in because they'll fin will either pivot out or will snap out before the box gives way. Uh, if you want to check this for yourself, just go into any surf shop, check out their second hand board rack and just have a look at the FCS2 fin boxes in the rack. You'll see nine times out of 10, there's bits of cracks and uh, dings around the front and the back of the fin box. So make sure you check those out, especially if you are shopping secondhand. Uh, but yeah, it's a good visible example of why the fin boxes on Futures boxes are much stronger than FCS 2s. And there you have it guys, that's five reasons why I've swapped from FCS 2 across to Futures fins. Now if you have any other questions about choosing the right fin system for you or picking your first surfboard, make sure you check out the link in the description below to all my surf guides. And of course, check out the rest of my YouTube channel for heaps of advice and surf guides as well. That's it for this week, guys. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next week.